Hello, my beautiful friends. So we all survived the eclipse. Who knew? I mean, it does happen twice a year, I think. Might even be more than that. What an exciting day it was. So here in eastern Pennsylvania, we had cloud cover, so you couldn't see a thing. But it was fun hanging out with my neighbors, and I have a new neighbor, so it was really great to get to know her. Um, and then uh, the male person came by, and we had fun with him because he had the glasses which you didn't need i went through all that trouble making those cereal boxes and i didn't need them because there was glad cover so we didn't say anything so anyway it was a good day but then this evening i went and i did a thing so um there is an organization called the daughters of scotia and i'm going to link it below um if you're of scottish descent um if you are Scottish and you're female, it's a fraternal organization for women. It's got a kind of interesting history. I did not know what this was. Um, I'm vice president of our local Scottish society, and um, my mother was very involved in the Scottish society when I was growing up. I moved away for a long time, and when I, when I moved back, I wanted to reconnect, and I play pipes with some of the guys uh, that are involved, too. And um, and really, like, truly, like, like some of my, like, one of the, my biggest fears in moving back to Pennsylvania. One of the reasons I moved away from Pennsylvania was because I was um, sort of, my mother was trying to like, I don't know, groom me to be like the savior of the family because that's really what she was. She was the person, she was the glue of, of her family and keeping everybody together. And then, um, you know, same sort of on like Dave's side, like Dave, like Dave's mom is the, she is the glue that keeps everybody together. And um, there was too much pressure on me and our little budding family to stay here. I had to leave. I had to go away um, because I needed my own life. Everybody was like, you know, thought they had something to say about how I did this and how we did that. And, and um, you know, I've always been an academic. I've always, um, you know, even though I'm very working class, you know, um, you know, and I put myself through school, um, I've always, you know, been the breadwinner in our family, in our household. And uh, people are having a lot of say in things that they just didn't need to have say a say in and um i needed to i needed to walk away and and thankfully i did and 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 um and, but when i moved back my big fear was that we would fall kind of back into that and like i don't want to say that dave had sketchy friends but i mean he is a biker he had he wasn't part of a biker gang but you know like <clears throat> always so much drama this person cheating on that person and you know this person stealing money from that person and this a whole lot of bullshit that i did not want to deal with and um and uh i was just afraid that we would fall back into you know sort of like go back into the lives that we had before and i didn't i i didn't have a life like that like we are very different they introduced us at our wedding as the as the professor and the madman you know, so I just, I didn't want to go back into that. But, but, you know, over the time that we'd been gone 20 years and in that 20 years, like Dave had used his GI bill to go back to school. He worked as a cardiac, uh, cardiovascular technologist, um, at a really big university hospital in New Jersey. So like, you know, he had changed as a person. And so those kind of friends weren't going to resonate with him anyway. So, um, so we moved back when my father, um, uh, was really, really sick. My mother had already passed and um and but his mom's getting older so we thought it's you know it, i had this opportunity for this job um doing stuff that i love doing so let, let's go back and i was afraid that i wouldn't find people find my people right i didn't really have people in new jersey i will say um that i i, I had nobody in new jersey because i've kind of worked it's it's not distance wise far but in new jersey because of the way traffic is everything is such a pain in the ass to get to um so you know i didn't live near where i worked so i had a commute i had a long commute just because traffic like if i if there were no other traffic it would be like 15 minutes but you know there's always traffic route 18 is a pain in the butt like we lived in uh, east brunswick so so i didn't really, you know, I was really just focused on my family. And when you have a disabled son, like that is really your focus anyway. And my boys, my older son did wrestling and, you know, there was just, you know, like we were busy, B busy being mom, busy doing mom stuff. So, um, when we moved back to Pennsylvania, you know, I, I, we didn't move back to our hometown, Bethlehem on purpose, but Dave and I are both from Bethlehem. Um, because I didn't want Dave's 
just like Dave's mom and dad lived a block away from her mom and they would just all go for dinner every night together. And Dave's father had been passed a long time. I, I, I didn't know Dave's dad. Um, but like then we lived a block away from that. And so every night it was like, we have to have dinner together. We have to do this together. We have to like, no, you don't take a libertarian like me and put me in like a place where we have these rules. No, 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 no. So I'm like, I don't, I don't, I want to live somewhere where you have to like get in your car and start it to get to my house. You're not just going to walk through an alley to get to my place. So that's uh, one of the reasons we moved to Palmerton and I wanted to live on the Appalachian Trail. And so uh, we had three towns that are on the Appalachian Trail that we could consider. And uh, I fell in love with Palmerton and I'm still in love with Palmerton. So, um, so. And coming back, I'm like, I really want to be careful about the friends. You know, I, I have my, my best friend that I've known since I'm four. Uh, she, she has a lot of children, so she's super, super busy. But, um, you know, I, my, my other best friend moved to Arizona. So, like, my closest friends, you know, have all kind of scattered. But I wanted to make good friends. So I, I will say, this is all to say, all of this history is so that you know that my friends that I met in the Scottish Society are awesome people and I love them. I love hanging out with them. Debbie and Jim, like, like they're like Dave and I love going out. Dave's really kind of shy, so he doesn't like to go. Out. He, he, we never travel together. A lot of people don't know that I'm married. A lot of people think I'm a lesbian too. And then that's fine. I don't care. Um, you know, because I'm never with anybody. I don't try, I don't go to concerts with him. We don't like the same kind of music. We don't, he doesn't like to go to any of the dinners that I go to. Like, I like the ballet, you know, he likes Slayer and all kinds of crappy music, you know, so we don't, I don't, I travel alone. I travel a lot and I travel alone. So a lot of people don't realize that I'm married, but it's just that we have very different interests and we always have, and that's kind of been the magic, right? So, um, so I get to do my Scottish society thing. And one of the ladies in Scottish society is a member of this daughters of Scotia. So I'm like, well, what is it exactly? <laughs> and she's like, well, it's a fraternal order. And I'm like, I, I don't know what that means. I didn't, I went to a Catholic college. We didn't, we had a service sorority. Um, they didn't have like a sorority house or anything, but when I transferred in, they had, um, they had like rush week or whatever that's called. And all the girls had to wear birthday hats. And, and, and I had transferred in from community college. So I'm like, you know what? That looks like nonsense. Not for me. Not for me. I, I'm not into that kind of stuff. So, um, and I'm not in a secret, you know, pinky swearing and all that crap either. Not that it's not interesting to me because I'm, I'm so interested in the mafia right now because of John's channel, but only because John's a good storyteller. I feel like if John weren't a good storyteller that he is, I probably wouldn't give a shit about that, but he, I like him. So, um, I like, his, I like his story. I like that he's turned his life around and, and he's, he's trying to work for the good of the world. So, so I like him. Um, anyway, so. Babs is like, well, you should join. And I'm like, I don't know about that. I don't know. What What do you do? Like, like what, like, do you do service? Like, do you have bake sales? Like, like, do you raise money for charity? Nope. We eat, we have meetings and we have a convention every year. Like, okay, well, what does that mean? So it is, it is actually a fraternal organization. Um, and, uh, and uh, it, it does have secret stuff. I was initiated tonight, so I learned some secret stuff. And it's actually kind of cool. I want to say it's a Scottish Girl Scouts, but better than Girl Scouts because it doesn't have all the baloney that you have to do with the Girl Scouts. Um, I mean, I'm still a Girl Scout, and I love the Girl Scouts, and I still teach outdoor leadership for Girl Scouts. But, um, you know, it, it's it's really Girl Scouts for grown-ups, and, um, and, like, you have a dinner, and there's, like, you know, there's the things that you do, and then, you know, there's little speeches, and then you eat some more, and you have tea. I'm like, I am all about this. This is, this is great. So, uh, so I'm excited to do that, and I was thinking, it, the, the closest lodge to where I live is in New Jersey, in Tinton Falls, New Jersey, which is an hour and 45 minutes from me here in, in, in the, the Gap. So, I was thinking, you know, it's interesting, like the, the way that this whole thing came, like there used to be back in the day. Now, my family has only been here since the 1920s. My family, literally both my mother's side and my father's side have only been here since the 1920s. So I've only, my family's only been here a hundred years, my lineage. But this organization, the clans, uh, the clan society of America was a male fraternal organization 
that was started to provide insurance for members of from Scotland, um, like insurance and beneficiary. It was like a an organization, and a bunch of the members were Masons, actual Masons, um, but they started this specifically for um, members of Scottish clans. And then the women's auxiliary group, the Daughters of Scotia, was created for the wives and the mothers and the and the widows and stuff. And uh, the men's organization, like, tanked twice and then was assumed by another fraternal organization. And the daughters have been going strong since, like, 1898. And pretty much the formula is simple. They, they do the ritual kind of stuff that Masonic temples are known for, I guess. Um, but pretty much they eat and they have fun and they, like, have more fun and they eat more and have tea. That's what happens. So I'm excited to be part of it because uh, we're going to try to do a local lodge here, um, local to us, because we have a lot of Scottish women in this area, and it would be great to have a lodge, you know, that's closer that I didn't have to drive an hour and 45 minutes to. Um, but it was, it was, I was thinking when I was coming home that it's interesting how we connect to our heritage, right? Like I'm, you know, spiritually Celtic. I, 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 um, I celebrate that Celtic Christianity you know, the teachings of John, that God is within us and, and that we're here. Our job here is to spread light and love, to help people see the light that's within them. Everybody has light with, within them. And, um, you think about it like a story, especially like a story like of John's, right. Of um, him being part of, um, the mafia and then, you know, and then turning away and, and, and trying to lead a better life. Like you can always, you can always find your light. Light can always be found. Um, and you don't have to go to a church to get that. Nobody has to give it to you. It's not something that you earn by doing a sacrament. It's not something you earn because you paid enough money. It's not something you earn because you kissed enough butt. You know, it's something that you already have. These are the gifts that you already have. And one of the things that you all have, that we all have, is our heritage. And we can honor and celebrate those who came before us. Now, sometimes you might not know what your heritage is. Maybe you're adopted. Um, you know, maybe your family doesn't know, maybe you don't want to do DNA testing. That's okay. You can adopt any heritage you want. You're an adult. You do whatever you want. And then learn about it, learn more about it, and see how it can bring meaning to your life, right? Um, you know, the daughters of Scotia like to get dressed up in fancy clothes. If we've, if you've not met me, I am not a fancy clothes girl. I've never been. I was a tomboy. I am a, um, the hiker dean, like I just, I, I don't pay a lot of attention to that kind of thing. Um, I, I have the blessing of not being a pretty girl growing up. I mean, I was, I, you know, I wasn't hideous, I guess, but you know, there were the girls that were super, super hot. I was never one of them and I'm okay with that. Like I'm okay because I, I kind of see how that turned out for them. Right. I see how that's turned out for them and, and, and. In most cases, it didn't turn out well, right, because, for whatever reason. And so I've always had to rely on my wit and my wisdom, and I'm very thankful for that because at 51, you know, I've worked for everything that I have, but um, I didn't have to use my looks to get there. I didn't have to use sexual prow prowess to get there because, uh, you know, guys weren't coming after me, and uh, they're certainly not coming after me now. Um, I mean, I'm married, so... Like, why would they, but, but you know what I'm saying? Like, like it's not, that's not the focus when people meet me, that isn't what they're looking for. So I think, um, you know, the fanciness of it will be a little interesting because I'm not so fancy, but there'll be times when I'm required to be fancy. So, you know, I'm going to branch out because I think it's important to celebrate your heritage. And I think if my mother were here and she had known about this, she would have been all about this. So I feel like I can honor my mother by being part of this and uh, and getting my nieces involved. So if you're watching, girls, hmm, you're getting involved too with your aunt. Um, but I think it's important to honor your heritage, you know. And I I look at other you know other cultures, span my Spanish friends, um, my African friends, my Ghanan friends, my Italian friends. Like I think you know I I love learning about culture, and I was thinking I. Sometimes when I watch uh, John's videos, um, you know, and he can rattle off those Italian names, I'm like, how the hell does he remember all that? How does he even say all those names? But then I realized that every 
uh, Gaelic word, Scottish Gaelic, there's Scottish Gaelic and then there's Irish Gaelic. Sometimes people pronounce it Gaelic, but it's Gaelic. Um, Scottish Gaelic has 52 more letters than any word ever needs. And I'm like, nobody can ever pronounce our word. Like, you know, look at, look at the name Siobhan. Like, it's not spelled at all like the way it sounds. Um, so I love learning about culture and I'm proud of my own. And, um, if, 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 if celebrating your culture, um, brings you meaning and helps you to, you know, really define your earthly existence, then it's okay. Right? Like, you know, learn about your ancestors, learn about your culture and, and honor and celebrate it if you can. So anyway, I am wishing you all the very best in light and love. I'm glad that we all survived the apocalypse that was not happening today during the eclipse. And I'll see you tomorrow.